the opportunity is extraordinary. We're entering a new intelligent age, and that's the onset of new, in incredibly intelligent technology capabilities that are going to enhance and augment our human endeavors. It's the great equalizer. It's the great leapfrogger. Suddenly, things that were accessible only to certain folks with certain education levels is accessible to everyone. And we see that technology, AI, data and robotic process automation is playing an important role in the field of operational excellence. In a way, the CIO is becoming the, the foundation for the new kind of businesses we're creating. More and more what companies are seeing is actually it's all about getting to insights faster. It does feel like a seismic paradigm shift is coming to the world of business. AI strategy is business strategy. Every strategy you're building, every tactic you're thinking about, AI first in that. Hello and welcome to the AI Frontier series, a global collaboration between Reuters Plus and KPMG. As AI technology rapidly evolves, organizations face both exciting opportunities and significant challenges in leveraging its potential for value creation. I'm your host, Nadira Tudor, and in the next nine episodes, we'll be diving into the unique challenges faced by key sectors, including banking, insurance, healthcare, energy, and manufacturing, as they undergo their AI transformation journeys. We'll begin by examining the phases of AI maturity and its transformative power, showcasing how AI can provide businesses with a competitive edge. I'm thrilled to be joined by six leading experts from KPMG today who'll be sharing their own insights and the promise of actionable takeaways. Thank you all for joining us. Hello, Regina. Hello, Nadira. If I can start with you, what do you see as the primary drivers for the accelerated adoption of AI across different industries today? What's driving the accelerated adoption of AI is the fact of its potential. It's the great equalizer. It's the great leapfrogger. Suddenly, things that were accessible only to certain folks with certain education levels is accessible to everyone. We can translate. We can write uh, emails and documents. So we can unlock the power of talent all around the world. And we can solve problems and use human potential for greater creativity. That is what businesses are coming to realize, and that is what is accelerating the adoption of AI. Thank you for identifying those drivers, Regina. And what impact is regulation having on this adoption? Regulatory impact is spotty at this point, very patchy, but it has the potential for great impact. We know uh, many things in our supply chains that are safe, foods that we consume, things that we interact with. We should know that AI has a base level of safety and guardrails are in place. But those guardrails and those regulations need to be cross-border. There needs to be some level of global consistency. And we need our regulators to start collaborating to drive those guardrails in a consistent, cohesive fashion so that we all can take advantage of what AI can bring to society. Okay, wow, with such significant return on investment, it's understandable why businesses feel so compelled to adopt AI at speed. David, if I can bring you in here, given the significant advancement in AI over the past six to 12 months, what are you seeing as the key opportunities and challenges that organizations are facing when it comes to integrating AI into their businesses? The opportunity is extraordinary. We're entering a new intelligent age, and that's the onset of uh, new, in incredibly intelligent technology capabilities that are going to enhance and augment uh, our human endeavours. And it's going to show up in cost, in efficiency, in agility, in quality, and it's going to make our customer interactions better and often more uh, empathetic. And the challenges though, and we're, we're right, right now we're moving from experimentation to scaling and getting to a return on investment. And, and so the challenges are around setting up a transformation journey for success here. So getting those foundations right. Now, Steve, if I can come to you, for those businesses with clear strategies in place and reliable data sets, how can they balance making short-term AI gains with long-term transformation? 
Yeah, I think we're seeing the emergence of companies are doing that right now. They are, uh, we, we recently ran a survey where all of the, um, all the respondents said that they were yet to grind out their ROI from these investments, but yet we're ready to move, like 75% said we're ready to move material uh, investment dollars into this. So, so between uh, 75%, between uh, 50 and $250 million. I think the point is, is that companies are already balancing the short-term gains that they're seeing, which are, which are material, but not yet driving all the way to ROI with this prospect of this transformative growth opportunity that they see. Okay, what are the steps organizations can take to move from these isolated AI projects to enterprise-wide integration? Yeah, I mean, I think most of the leading companies had already moved, it's table stakes for companies to have already moved into uh, making um, access, you know, so 100% of their employees with access to these tools, uh, specialized tools inside um, the specific function or what have they, so things like um, development tools. So, so that was table stakes, and now we're moving on. We were faced with, uh, hey, maybe we haven't even uh, done all of the things that we hope to do, and now agents are on the horizon. And so that's, you know, so, so I think what we're in is a moment of continual change at a pace we haven't seen before. So companies are really trying to build agility into their organizations right now. Welcome back to AI Frontiers with me, Nadira Tudor. We're talking to KPMG experts about how AI is creating value across industries and looking at how companies are implementing AI in these early stages of adoption. So, how is the journey of AI evolving for enterprises and what transformations are necessary to fully unlock AI's potential value? Well, AI is advancing really quickly, so the journey is rapidly uh, progressing. We think we've been in for a while what we call the enable phase, basically putting in AI in different parts of the, of the business, various functional use cases and trials, etc. That's been going very successfully. But soon now we're seeing scaling of AI, embedding it into workflows, into end-to-end -end processes. That's going to be quite a radical shift. That's going to change the operating model of businesses, unlock a lot more value. And we think after that, and possibly in parallel, some folks will look at evolving their business model, perhaps getting into new products and services and partnering in new ways. OK, so can you provide any examples about how this looks like in practice? Well, in practice, it varies a lot by sector. So, for example, in healthcare, if you think about the healthcare system, it's quite disjointed if you're a patient handling, uh, being handled all the way through the end-to-end -end care life cycle, so to speak. So AI can support that end-to-end -end patient pathway more effectively. It can help doctors diagnose, can help triage, can help work out uh, where, where patient beds are, uh, are free and then and get people back at home, you know, care in the community. So it's, that's just one a sector example. What transformations are necessary regarding legacy systems to fully leverage the benefits of AI? The question of legacy systems is a really hot topic with CIOs around the world. There's a lot of focus on new technology foundations, you know, from the, from the chips up, as sometimes we say, from the new, the new GPUs, uh, the data layer that's really important to get the data flowing seamlessly across the end-to-end -end enterprise, taking it out of legacy systems, applying models of all sorts of different types, and then creating AI applications. Now they're called agents quite often. That's a new emerging topic that we're seeing. And agents uh, give agency to AI. They allow it to do work. That changes how applications are structured. And so there's a lot to do. In a, in a way, the CIO is becoming the, the foundation for the new kind of businesses we're creating. Thank you, Adrian. From the chips up indeed, at the risk of moving into hyperbole, it does feel like a seismic paradigm shift is coming to the world of business, driven by the promise of significant efficiency gains and greater productivity. Ashish, if I can bring you in here now, are these gains real? And if so, what can organizations do to better enhance any efficiencies? Uh, thanks for the question, Adira. So we as KPMG are working for lots of global clients, and we see that technology, AI, data and robotic process automation is playing an important role in the field of operational excellence. So let me give you an example, very concrete, what we see for one of our global clients, a chemical company based out of Germany, they're using Microsoft Copilot, almost 50,000 licenses in order to integrate process automation and AI across the value stream, starting from upstream business to downstream business, how can they increase the operation excellence? So in terms of CFO agenda, it's all about gaining performance. That's all about saving money and improving your EBITDA. So that's one story around using AI and process automation. The second example, 
One of a global insurance company, they're using AI and process automation in order to optimize their workflow for the full life cycle of an insurance life cycle. So that's the kind of examples we, we are seeing in the market. And we as KPMG, we advise our clients that before you start the journey of AI, which is based on process automation, and in future also about agents, it's important to take care of your data. So it's all about the data model and the connection between them. Thank you, Ashish. Staying with the concept of AI being an enabler of end-to-end -end transformation, one active area companies are increasingly looking to implement AI capabilities into is mergers and acquisitions. Hello, Liz. As KPMG's Global Head of Deal Advisory, can you tell me how are organisations leveraging M&A to enhance their capabilities within the evolving AI ecosystem? I would say, firstly, the case for change is now so compelling. Um, so companies and boardrooms are not asking the why and the what, they're asking the how and the how, fa how fast. And, and that's because clearly AI now, the case for change, is absolutely compelling as a driver for growth. Clearly M&A is a key growth driver in organisations. So what we're actually seeing is more and more companies are recognising that whilst they need to build AI in-house, they also potentially start acquiring assets and companies that enables them to get there faster. Um, I'd say that's particularly the case in the commercial parts of organisations. So just to bring a few examples to life, um, actually Thomson Reuters herself have bought a business called CaseNet in the legal and tax professional services space, which has already got AI absolutely at the heart of its business model. Or a case where we advised a cybersecurity company recently who were very much in the civilian part of the market and they wanted to move alongside that into an adjacent market into defence. So um, some examples really of where we're seeing M&A as a real driver for that growth. Thank you, Liz. And what types of challenges are they facing when it comes to integrating AI into M&A deals? Yeah, well, I would say, honestly, it's very similar to any other M&A process. It's all about doing your due diligence um, and really thinking about the value case so that you can integrate successfully. I'd say that's even more important in the AI space because the technology is evolving so fast. There's so much out there. So actually being really clear around where that AI is absolutely going to add the value into the, the business models and the operating models of the businesses um, is really important. Um, I'd say initially in the processes, what people tended to see and what we've seen is actually by applying tools, you can actually run the processes a bit faster, a bit more efficient, efficiently and do some of the scanning faster. But actually more and more what companies are seeing is actually it's all about getting to insights faster. Um, and actually, if you think about that, um, that's at the heart of competitive advantage in M&A process. Um, at KPMG, actually, just to bring an example to life, we've built a platform called Elevate, which effectively enables um, us to apply that technology um, to identify value. Um, and how we've done that, we've built specific AI um, uh, building blocks, analytical building blocks, where we've actually been able to apply AI to that. Um, and therefore you apply that very specifically to parts of the value chains of business to help them build their value creation case to do that deal. And if you actually think about that, why is that so important? Well, it's all about competitive advantage. So it enables them to have more confidence in going to their board around their value case. And it really it enables them to think about how they, what price they can pay, what synergies they can realise. And then probably most importantly, how they, re how they build an integration plan to realise that value through the, through the um, integration process and the implementation process. And when it comes to issues around trust and human AI collaboration, how can leaders ensure that intelligent enterprises are using AI responsibly? Right, now that's super important. We've recently interviewed 47,000 people in 47 different countries around the world. And our people want to give us, our leaders, a message about some of the challenges they're seeing when they're, when they're using AI. Okay, so there's a leadership challenge here, setting out our ethical boundaries, giving people the skills, giving them the tools that they need to use so that they can uh, be clearly trusted in, their, in the way that they're using AI. And what is the role of employees in ensuring this? Oh, well, it's incumbent on all of us to embrace AI, uh, to take the opportunity, um, understand what AI can do for people, experiment as part of their own personal learning journey. There are plenty of learning uh, resources out there that are available to everyone all the way around the world. Um, and then to start to consider what is the combination of uh, 
human endeavor plus AI, where is that going to take us into the future? My last question for today is for all the executives wondering what are the key strategic actions I should focus on in order to maximize the value from my AI investment. Steve, what advice would you give? Yeah, I mean, and I get a chance to talk to clients all the time about this exact question. Um, many of them are not satisfied with the uh, direction of their program or some of the leaders that we were talking about. Um, one thing I think that rings true is AI strategy is business strategy. You need to put AI in everything that you're, every strategy you're building, every tactic you're thinking about, AI first in that. Uh, second is, I think that differentiating the leaders is that they have a clear direction set by an individual or a set of individuals with power to move the organization. This is a transformative moment. Um, some no regrets moves are, you gotta get your data right. Um, and if your data isn't right, which many, many companies are not yet where they would like to be with that, uh, you need to make those investments and make them now. You got to build the trust frameworks as well, because as we begin to uh, bring more advanced capabilities to bear, um, it's going to, it's going to, you can't move fast if you don't have the right capabilities around trust. Uh, I mentioned agents. We must be focused on, um, on understanding where agents are going to impact the business model. And lastly, we need to bring the people along. Our, our people are our most precious commodity in this rewiring of business. They typically can't move as fast mentally as the technology can move. So the training benefit, the training burden on us is quite substantial. Rethinking how work is done. Uh, that's going to be a big investment that every company needs to make. OK, well, that's all we have time for today. What a great discussion and deep dive into the stages of AI evolution and how enterprises can better unlock value. Thank you all for joining me for the launch of AI Frontiers. In upcoming episodes, we'll be delving further into KPMG's research into the challenges and opportunities industries face with AI implementation. Stay tuned for more. And until next time, bye for now.